This suspect had 70 different Facebook sites. It seems very clear that he was trying to get a lot of attention any which way he could. All right, my name is Luca Magnata. We received information that he was staying in North London. Luca Magnata might be on his way to Berlin. I'm very determined, and every goal that I put my uh, mind to, I surpass. The dangerous, scary people are people who care about their looks, who are quite polite, who have a dark side. Well, of course, that's a story of Luca Magnata. I'm Sarah McIntyre filling in for Adrian Batra. And there's a documentary about him. It's called Sex, Fame and Murder. It's going to be airing on Friday. I have the producer and writer in studio, Miles Shane, as well as the director, Naomi Hiltz. Thanks so much for coming in studio. So obviously a bit of controversy about even doing the documentary. You know, this is a guy that liked to see his name in lights, liked to see his picture on Facebook, liked everyone to be paying attention to him. Were you perhaps considered or, or worried about the fact that you would be feeding into this fame uh, game of Luca Magnata when you were making the, the documentary? Um, early on, yeah, I mean, I think that we we are in a sense giving him what he wants in a in a sense of things, but mm -hmm. everybody everybody's been giving him what he wants in a certain sense. And mm -hmm. part of the documentary is on the victim Yun Lin, and it talks a little bit about his life and how they came to meet and different things like that. And I think a lot of people focus on you know the the killers in in these kinds of things and and uh, forget about the victims a mm -hmm. lot of the time. So we do shed a light on his life to a certain extent so I think that'll be nice yeah that's important is to remember the victim and, and his father of course was here throughout the entire trial uh, very moving statement at the conclusion mm -hmm. of that trial were you able to speak with him at all for the documentary or was it already filmed and finished by then Should, uh, the, uh, I mean the documentary has been finished since August actually oh, okay and it was um, as you may know it was going to air um, before the trial but then it it was banned um, under the publication by, ban. Under, under the publication ban, and right. couldn't play it anywhere in Canada on television or or um, in festivals or any of that. So now it's finally going to play. So we never had a chance to talk to the father or anybody during the trial because the documentary was complete. Okay. So what about um, Luca Magnata? What are, what are we going to learn? Anything um, new um, about the documentary? When does it start in terms of his life and his timeline and mm -hmm. his infamy? And where does it where does it end? Perhaps I'll start with you, Naomi. Sure. Um, the documentary is a bit is a biography piece and a crime piece, obviously. Mm -hmm. And we do go into his childhood. So um, okay. it it basically focuses on you know all the events that took place up until he was arrested in Germany, mm -hmm. and it goes back backwards into when he was born. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it was funny because I was talking to Miles and we were saying how upset we were that the film couldn't air before the trial, which was the plan, and it aired in a lot of different countries before the trial. That's right. Yeah, but now it's kind of nice because it fills in, you know, we followed the trial, and it, for people that are interested in everything and that followed the trial, it fills in a lot of the holes for them. Right. Like, we have so many interviews with experts and close friends of his and his ex-girlfriend, and I think people will like watching it knowing more about him from the trial and it'll kind of give them an idea of his life from birth to I guess now yeah and I mean that's the question we we all have and, and you know it's this not a fascination I would say with serial killers but when somebody does something so inhumane you try and wrap the mind around it you try and understand how could this happen and so um, were you able to miles actually speak with Luca Magnata uh, as part of the documentary or is it just you went back and kind of interviewed people that knew him yeah uh, we we weren't able to speak with uh, Mr. Magnata, as his lawyers wouldn't let that happen. And, mm -hmm. you know, Luca probably would have spoke to us, but, uh, you know, I, I don't think he was calling the shots. Uh, we, we spoke to a lot of, um, you know, people from his childhood. Uh, but, but what I think our documentary really did was have the experts analyze what happened. We had mm -hmm. on, you know, uh, the um, a gentleman, former FBI, who um, found the? Who was part of the team that found the Unabomber? Okay. So we had some pretty high-profile, um, I, I guess, um, mm -hmm. investigators and that type of thing, analyzing Magnata as to, like you said, why would he yeah. do something 
Just so horrible. Yeah, so horrible and barbaric and and bizarre. You know, you, you, the act of killing, but then the planning of it, and then afterwards, uh, what he what he did. And you know, um, I, a lot of people wonder how how this could happen. And I saw some like references to you know Paul Bernardo, another infamous mm -hmm. uh, Canadian, um, and the fact that you know the the hometown of both of these individuals being Scarborough, and mm -hmm. and a lot of people. Um, um, talking again about Paul Bernardo, and in fact, he had at one point was seeing, I think, Carla Homolka, or there's rumors there's of rumor. that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, um, what did you think? What do you? Th where is it going to air? And, and what do people? What are people going to learn about the Luca Magna Magnata story um, if they go and watch the documentary? Um, it's going to be airing on Investigation Discovery on Friday at eight, okay, and eight. Canal D on Friday at eight as well. Eight Eastern. Yeah, okay. Easter, and um, a lot of the things that people will learn, they'll learn about his childhood, mm -hmm. um, they'll learn about his, I guess, a little bit more about his personality with personal relationships, and at the, the, the show, although he's convicted now, was made before the trial, so it, it's actually a little bit more of an unbiased documentary because mm -hmm. we couldn't say whether he was guilty, we didn't know, nobody, nobody knew. So we learn a lot of different different sides of him. It's not all bad necessarily. It's just this is his life and mm -hmm. as unfortunate as it was, this is the way it was. So I think you learn a, a lot about him on a very personal level and like Miles was saying, like why he would do what he did. Yeah, I mean it, it yeah. really touches on how a person will just do anything to become famous and you see this evolution on Magnata's part as how he tries one thing and it doesn't work, and another thing, and then he gets into this the This keeps cats. escalating yeah. and escalating. And at first, it's it's more like the way an, an average person would try fame, mm. like trying out for shows and that kind of things. And, mm. and then it stems to making up rumors, yeah. like he's dating Carla Homolka, and then he denies that he makes them up, and then he goes on TV to deny, you know, to create fame for himself. Are you guys worried at all about any type of backlash, uh, you know, in the sense that, you know, the, the criticism being you've provided a platform for this killer um, who uh, mm -hmm. took a, a young a, a innocent uh, life um, and the follow-up question to that is obviously is any money going towards Luca Magnata from this documentary well I mean no money is going towards yeah. uh, Magnata I mean I don't I don't even think that's it's illegal, illegal in, Canada, in Canada but I have to ask it because people at home yeah, why yeah, yeah no, that, right? no money's going towards uh, Magnata um, as for your for your other question, I mean, you know, we we basically. Um you want to elaborate on that? Yeah, I mean, you were saying, like, we, we call him the, the first social media killer, yeah. in yeah. a sense. So you're talking about, like, one of the things that's important is that he, he was on the Internet. He posted that he was going to do these things, and not just for Yun Lin, but he posted about the kitten killings. Yes. Like, did, nobody... There's re, red like, flags out there, There's tons right? of red flags, yeah. and he talked about it days before it happened, for the ki kitten killings and for Yun Lin, like, online. And if anything, like... Now that the med like the social media is so big and you can do a lot of stuff, like he he wanted the world to see it, and he was in a, in essence the first social media killer. Like Bernardo taped his killings, but he, you know, based on the the research we've done and experts we've talked to, it seemed like he was um, filming them for himself, personal. Yeah. Right, Luca was filming it for everybody else. But in terms of in terms of backlash, I mean, yeah. when this comes out and it's finally seen by the media and, and all the people out there, I mean. I mean, I think there will be, be some backlash because of the subject, but what, I, I mean, I think you, you and I have talked about this, we really want people to say, hey, you know, this guy, you know, if, if you have a friend and he's acting and he's, and he's ill uh, or, or whatever, there's a lot of warning signs in this documentary of somebody who could be going down that slippery slope. Yeah. And, you know, the documentary, documentary clearly shows that. So. If you, if you know people or you see these kind of things. Or if somebody goes online and says, I'm doing this, this is the plan, maybe we should look into it. Somebody yeah, or flag into it to someone, a security yeah. agency or, or your local police and say, look, at, I, I've seen this behavior and it's escalating and mm -hmm. I'm concerned about it. So I think that's a, that's a really good point. We don't have much time, but just before you go, did you think Luca Magnonet did it when you were making the, at the end of the documentary? Um, I, I did. Yeah. I believed I believe he did, yeah. And, and what about you, Miles? 
you know, I, I always was pretty sure he did it because of the uh, evidence with the um, tape. Mm -hmm. But was he um, mentally sound and all that? And there's I, a lot I of premeditation I, there. Yeah, I mean, I, he knew enough to book a flight. He, yeah, you know, he may have some mental illness. He definitely does have mental illness, but I don't know if he was out of it at that time necessarily. Like, yeah, you know. I think that there's a bit of a, he seems psychotic, but he didn't seem that he was out of his uh, sound mind. He actually yeah. knew yeah. what he was doing. But, you know, I, um, well, I commend you on, on doing this. And, and I, I do hope that people do watch it and see it as, you know, the first social media killer. There are red flags there. And the, the what they take away from that is, you know, if you do see somebody exhibiting similar behaviors to intervene first, yes. as opposed to allowing it to escalate and um, become the the awful story that is uh, Luca Magnata and, and Yun Lin as, mm -hmm. as well, which I um, was so ha happy that his father was able to be here in Canada through the entire trial and that we actually got the verdict. They, they, they were, you know, his, parents, mm -hmm. his parents uh, and, and his family in general were just amazing how they, mm -hmm. you know, they, they sat through everything and they, they commented on it, but they weren't you know, they, they, they were very calm and... Mm -hmm. Reserved. Yeah, they, mm -hmm. they really, um, you know, in a very tough situation, they really acted very nice, nicely, you know, where they could have acted in a complete <laughs> other way. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Well, I wish you the best. It's, it's airing on Friday. Thanks so much for coming in studio. And